Hi there. It's May 30th. I'm talking for Proverbs 30. Well, this is a very interesting proverb written by Agar, son of Jacob. It's the first verse. Mm. The pronouncement, some say the oracle or the utterance or prophecy. The man's oration to Ithiel, to Ithiel and Ukon. Now, these may have, these were thought to maybe be his students. Agar may have been a, a follower or student of Solomon. It doesn't really doesn't get into that detail but it was put in here because God wanted it in here so and a lot of this is rhetorical but a lot of it's not okay the words of Agar son of Jacob the pronouncement or oracle or utterance the man's oration to Ithiel to Ithiel and Ukal okay I am more stupid than any other person what's this note say stupid than a man and I lack a human's ability to understand. I have not gained wisdom. Okay, now this. What's interesting is that <clears throat> a lot of the scholars throughout history who were thought to be the wisest people that ever lived, at the end of their lives, most of them will say something to the tune of through all my life and all my search for knowledge and all of my wisdom I have found out that I know nothing okay and they all say that no oh, and he too says it I am more stupid than any other person and I lack a human's ability to understand I have not gained wisdom hmm. and I have no knowledge of the Holy One okay now these are rhetorical questions who has gone up to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in his hands? Who has bound up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? Now this part I highlighted is very interesting. What is his name? And what is the name of his son? If you know. Okay. He's talking about God. And this is Old Testament. Thousands of years ago. What is his name? And what is the name of his son? If you know. Okay. Now we call him Jesus now, but back then, you know, the prophecy says he'll be born and you will name him Emmanuel, Jesus, God with us. It's interesting that they, even all the way back to the beginning, they knew about the Trinity, about the three in one, about, about God, the Son, Holy Spirit, you know. And that man was made in his image. We have a body, a soul, and a spirit. A human spirit, which is the light of the lamp of God, supposed to be. Okay. But they talk about that even back then. They know about Jesus. Okay. We call him Jesus. The Jews still don't believe, a lot of the Jews still don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah even though he fulfilled every prophecy and the mathematical impossibility of one person fulfilling every prophecy that's not Jesus, the Son of God, is astronomically impossible, okay? It can't be anybody but Jesus. But they knew about it back then. I just, that's very interesting. Hmm? <laughs> Verse 5, every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Don't add to his words or he will rebuke you and you will be proved a liar. Right. A lot of this is going on. Jesus said it would. He said false prophets would appear. People would appear claiming to be him. It's And, and Jesus even said it they will be so convincing that if possible they will even fool the elect okay and the only way you can get around that is by studying the bible over and over again so you will know okay it's an interesting little side story when they teach people and I went to a class once where they taught <clears throat> I was a uh, I was a retail manager 
and they had a class on how to tell counterfeit money because and this was in California and it was rampant people were were counterfeiting $20 bills and $5 bills and what they did instead of showing you all this counterfeit money they showed you real money you studied real money every line every nuance every letter every shape and you got to know the real ones so well that you would never see that you would instantly be able to tell a counterfeit and I always thought that was interesting that the way to know a counterfeit is to know the real ones so well that you'll be able to spot it instead of saying look at this fake bill and this fake bill and this fake bill and this fake bill study the real one over and over we studied it we blew it up on microscopes and studied every line to where you got to know the money so well that you could look at another one and say this is missing and this is missing this is wrong and you didn't have to look at all these different counterfeits to know and instantly see that something was wrong the word of god is like that study the real word of god so when somebody says something, you could say, that's not what it says in the Bible. That's wrong. Okay. And a lot of people have been, you know, shamed, proved to be liars and found out in the assembly, it says in other parts. Uh, yeah. Don't add to his words. Don't take away from his words. Okay. This is interesting. <clears throat> Good advice. Two things I ask of you. Don't deny them to me before I die. Keep falsehood and deceitful words from me. Give me neither poverty or, nor wealth. Okay. Give me, this is good words to live by. Give me neither poverty nor wealth. Feed me with the food I need. Otherwise I may have too much and deny you saying who is the Lord. Or I might have nothing and steal profaning the name of my God okay you always want just enough okay if you suddenly get rich you can say I don't need God I'm rich now and if you're too poor you could be forced to steal because you're starving to death and prof profaning or grabbing what does it say in the, some other versions here Verse 9. <laughs> Basically the same thing. Yeah. New Living says, And if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not too much, not too little, just enough. Give us this day our daily bread. Right? Jesus said in the perfect prayer. Hmm? Verse 10 Don't slander a servant to his master, or he will curse you, and you will become guilty. Right? Not bad. <clears throat> And that could be any servant to his master. It could be slandering a Christian before to God. Okay. 11. There is a generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. This, there's, yeah. what do you think? All these generational things. There's a generation that is pure in its own eyes, yet is not washed from its filth. There's a generation, how haughty its eyes and pretentious its looks. There is a generation whose teeth are swords, whose fangs are knives, devouring the oppressed from the land and the needy from among mankind. Huh. Old generation. And there's been these too. We'll dig deeper into that when we come back through it. The leech has two daughters, give, give. <laughs> the leech has two daughters, give, give. Huh? Three things are never satisfied. Four never say enough. Four things. 
soul, hell is never satisfied. A childless womb, right, is never satisfied. Earth, which is never satisfied with water, and fire, which never says enough. True statement. Earth is never satisfied with water. Fire never says enough. Okay. Fire is always hungry for more fuel. Okay. As for the eye that ridicules a father and despises obedience to a mother, may the may ravens of the valley pluck it out and young vultures eat it. Okay. Not honoring your father and mother back then was huge. It was one of the one of the Ten Commandments. It's very important. And if you were caught dishonoring your parents, they could stone you and kill you. Okay. That's very important. Here's more three no four. Three things are too wondrous for me. Four I can't understand. The way of an eagle in the sky the way of a snake on a rock, the way of a ship at sea, and the way of a man with a young woman. <laughs> now these are basic stuff. The one that gets me is this right here. The way of a man with a young woman. <laughs> you can be out with a group of your friends, the guys are out doing stuff, and, and, and a pretty girl walks by, and these guys turn into something totally different. They're stumbling over themselves and and doing stupid stuff. And look at me and and when a guy gets a new girlfriend, he's a different person. He's walking around, the, you know. Who can understand that? That's funny. Twenty. This is the way of an adulteress. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, "I've done nothing wrong." Okay. Hmm. 21, the earth trembles under three things that cannot bear up under four. Uh, three, no, four. But wait, there's more, right? A servant when he becomes king. Hmm. A fool when he is stuffed with food. An unloved woman when she marries. And a servant girl when she ousts her queen. Hmm. Now this goes on. I mean, something may have popped, up, popped in your head when you read that one. Okay, it goes on right now. Went on back then, it goes on now. Okay. And if you don't know who that is, I'm not going to tell you. Okay. And the earth trembles under these things. It doesn't say bad or good, it just says the earth trembles. Four things on earth are small, yet they're extremely wise. He likes his four things. So. Ants are not a strong people, yet they store up their food in the summer. Hyraxes, which is a, kind of a badger, okay, are not a mighty people, yet they make their homes in the cliffs. Locusts have no king. Yet all of them march in ranks, right? A lizard can be caught in your hands, yet he lives in the king's palaces. Okay, four things. There's another three, no four. <laughs> three things that are stately in their stride, four that are stately in their walk. A lion, which is mightiest among beasts and doesn't retreat before anything. Okay. A strutting rooster. A stately, yes, they are very proud, aren't they? A goat. And the goats just do what they want, okay? They're very proud, they're not, we don't worry about stuff. And a king at the head of his army. Okay. And there's a note that says, yeah, addressing his people. 
when you have hundreds of thousands of people behind you, you walk stately and proud, right? Hey. If you have been foolish by exalting yourself, or if you've been scheming, put your hand over your mouth. For the churning of milk produces butter, and twisting a nose draws blood, and stirring up anger produces strife. Right. Exalting yourself, not being humble. One of the main themes of the entire Bible, to be a better person, is to be humble. Okay? Humble. Not wise. Wise in your own eyes. Braggart. Think you know more than everybody. Because you don't. Psyche says, Edgar was a very wise and learned person. And he says, I have learned that I know nothing. Okay? No matter how much you learn, you will never compare to what God knows. Okay? And you can't even assume to know how he formed the earth and controls the waters and the wind and knows all the stars but yet knows every sparrow and every hair on your head okay you can't even imagine that kind of knowledge it's not possible so there you have it that's Proverbs 30 there's only one left and that's a <clears throat> that's an acrostic poem about women wives and we'll do that tomorrow but let's go over our highlights we already talked about this this agar says i am more stupid than any other person and i lack humans ability to understand i have not gained wisdom one of the smartest wisest people who had students under him said i am more stupid than any man and i lack a human's ability to understand once you realize the awesomeness of God and everything he does and controls, you can't comprehend that, okay? You just, there's no way you could comprehend that kind of knowledge, and it will make you feel stupid in comparison, okay? And if you learn everything in the world, you will realize that you actually know nothing, okay? That's what that says. And I have no knowledge of the Holy One or God. Eh? And this interesting part of four. And there's little scatterings of this all over the Old Testament. What is his name and what is the name of his son, if you know? The name of God's son. Eh? I've often wondered, what was his name back then? Before he came to earth and, and they said, you will name him Emmanuel. You know, Jesus, Son of God, God with us. They didn't have a name for him back then. A lot of the Old Testament refers to him as the angel of the Lord. Okay. Because they didn't know what else to call him. He didn't have a name. God didn't have a name. His name was just, I am. Okay. <laughs> Not I was or I will be. His name is I am. Verse 5 and 6, we highlighted. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Don't add to his words, or he will rebuke you, and you will be proved a liar. And this goes on all the time. Okay? All the time. In fact, in there is a a group, okay, Mormons, okay, we'll go ahead and say it, the Mormons, they added one verse to Genesis and created a whole new religion that's false, okay? The one verse they added in Genesis says, as man is, God once was, and as God is, man may become never appears anywhere it's not bible they added it okay so now they think that they will be like god and have their own earths and their own peoples and their own creations someday it's staggering to think about but and this goes on all the time 
People add words, or they'll, or they'll take a half of a sentence and put it on half of another sentence in another book written hundreds of years later, and we have a brand new sentence that doesn't that doesn't appear in the Bible. But they say, see what it says. That happens all the time too. You should take take the Bible in its entire context. Okay, if if a and you got to remember back then they weren't cut up into verses and chapters. It was one long run on they very seldom use periods okay so and if you take the middle of a sentence break it into another verse if it if your verse starts with and then but therefore any of those words it is a continuation of a sentence you should always go to the sentence above find the beginning of it and read it all together so you're not taking stuff out of context okay a lot that goes on rampantly today taking verses out of context when it was one each book was written in one long sentence there were no breaks in it okay they didn't do that back then hmm? okay we highlighted eight and nine very stuff to keep you know two things he asked of God don't deny them to me before I die and we should highlight this. Keep falsehood and deceitful words far from me. Give me neither poverty nor wealth. Okay. okay. Keep lies and deceitful words away from me. Give me neither poverty nor wealth. All right. Feed me with the food I need, otherwise I might have too much and deny you, saying, Who is the Lord? Or I might have nothing and steal, profaning the name of my God. Okay? Just enough. Okay? Just enough to share with the poor and feed yourself. Okay? You don't want too much money. Okay? You don't want too much food. And if you have too much food, share it. Give it to the poor. That's why you have it. Hmm? I mean, I highlighted this, this whole thing, the generations, and they get these generations every, you know, every fourth or fifth generation. There's a generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. There's a generation that is pure in its own eyes, yet is not washed from its filth. There is a generation who is haughty, who, how haughty its eyes and pretentious its looks. There is a generation whose teeth are swords and whose fangs are knives devouring the oppressed from the land and the needy from among mankind. Okay. Our generations like that. Hmm. Very selfish, you know. Some of these later generations are very selfish. They think they know everything. Okay. Teeth are swords. Whose fangs are knives. They say mean things and they don't care. Lots of that going on. You could, you know, I'm not going to point fingers because it's easy to do. You, if you point one finger, you're pointing three back at yourself. So don't point fingers. Okay. Four things on earth that are never satisfied. Hell, a childless womb. Earth, which is never satisfied with water. Okay. Earth never has enough water. Even though it's filled with water, some places don't get enough. The deserts. Hmm? And a fire, which never says enough. Right? A fire needs constant fuel to keep burning. Hmm? And four things he cannot, he couldn't understand. Two wonders for him to understand. Okay, The way an eagle flies. That's a beautiful thing to see. The way a snake crawls on a rock with no legs. Okay? The way of a ship at sea. Other people can't understand this, but he couldn't, you know, it just goes wherever it wants. And the funny one, the way of a man with a young woman. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't, nobody can understand that, it just happens. Yeah. And we have those other four, th four things, he had lots of four things in here. Okay. The earth trembles under four things. 
A servant becomes king, a fool when he is stuffed with food. <laughs> An unloved woman when she marries. And a servant girl when she asks her queen. Hmm. Okay. Four things that are small yet are extremely wise. Ants. Hybraxes. Well, let's just for kicks, let's um let's look that up. Yeah, Hyrax. A small herborous mammal with a compact body and a very short tail found in arid country in Africa and Arabia. The nearest relatives to Hyraxes are the elephants and other sub elephants? Oh. Hmm. Little tiny things. Like a mouse without a tail. They're kind of cute, huh? Which are prevalent over in that area where these people lived. But they make their homes in the cliffs. Locusts are interesting. Okay. Extremely wise. They travel in troops and bands and they're all together, yet they have no king or no ruler. Interesting, huh? And a lizard fast, agile. You can catch them, but they but you can't keep them out of palaces. My house is sealed and I find lizards in my house all the time. I live out in the woods and you know, you catch them. And, you know, you put them back outside because lizards won't hurt you. They're just cute little things that eat bugs. Hmm. Four things that are stately in their walk. A lion, a strutting rooster. There's a note there. Or a greyhound. Hmm. A goat. A king at the head of his army. All right. Stately in their walk. Proud and not afraid. So there you have it. That's Proverbs 30. Hmm. And we didn't highlight this, but it's kind of standing out to me now. Well, there it is. If you have been foolish by exalting yourself, or if you've been scheming, put your hand over your mouth. If you've been bragging, or scheming, or telling people how great you are, shut your mouth. Okay. <laughs> For the tuning of turnigum mouth produces butter, a twisting of nose draws blood, stirring up anger produces strife and this whole thing together says if you keep shooting up off your mouth somebody is going to punch you in the face okay <laughs> it's just that simple keep shooting off your mouth somebody is going to punch you in the face right just like turning of mouth produces butter twisting of the nose draws blood and stirring up anger produces strife so, there you have it. That is Proverbs 1. We are through the Bible in a year. I think we're going to start. There's two chapters in Kings today, 3 and 4. And I think we made a red one or two already. can't remember. But is it today? Catch up on any you may have missed. Give us a like if you think about it. Take these things to heart. Okay? These are wise words wise words. So, see you later.